This is something that is known to exist where there are uh, pathogens or pathogenic molecules, so harmful things that will move from the dirty guts, which naturally, you know, they're a little dirty. Um, that's, that's one of the points of interaction with the environment uh, where we are inject something from the outside is getting into the body. And so it's the role of the intestines to make sure that only what is supposed to come in comes in. And if something isn't supposed to come in, it stays in the guts. And so the intestines really do have an exquisitely well-built integrity to them to make sure that uh, to really do its, its job in keeping the dirty stuff out. Now, there are instances when that starts to break down a bit, and now you have things leaking in, and, and that's why we, that's where we bring in the term leaky gut. <clears throat> so uh, this is a phenomenon, uh, and it doesn't take a lot to find ample peer-reviewed evidence um, directly invoking those terms and then having uh, ample studies that uh, support the reality of it. When we talk about leaky gut, in the context in which I'm familiar with it, it is usually looking at the migration of a molecule called LPS or lipopolysaccharide. This is a remnant that is found on bacteria and it moves into the bloodstream and then elicits very strong uh, inflammatory responses. So this is a part of, um, of a bacteria that a cell, our immune cells, in fact, even more than the prototypical immune cells, fat cells will respond to this, lung cells, muscle cells. I've published studies on muscle cells that bind to this LPS. So LPS is a part of, of a bacterium that will bind. It's something that the immune cell or any cell will recognize. And then in recognizing that component of bacteria, it will initiate a prototypical inflammatory response. So this is the cell's way of saying, ah, I recognize you, you're a problem, and now I'm going to mount my defenses to get rid of you. So this is the molecule LPS that I'm very familiar with that is known to move from the, the dirty guts, if you will, into the clean blood. So it, it, normally there wouldn't be any of that moving across, but, but that it does start to happen. Really, it's not that the LPS is moving through the gut cells. It's that it's moving in between the space, uh, through the space between the gut cells. So we, bet, uh, when we have um, the gut cells, uh, that the, the cells that line the intestines, they are very, very tightly linked together through these a series of proteins that make a tight junction. They're actually called tight junction proteins, and they can become loose. So what is a normally a very tight junction becomes a bit of a loose junction. And now we can have molecules slipping through or leaking through, if you will. So the liver uh, is the first recipient of these things once it's moving from the gut. And the liver is the big downstream recipient. So when you have blood flow um, flowing through the intestines, it goes into the liver and then it goes to the rest of the body. So the liver's on the front lines. But in fact, saying that isn't entirely fair because the intestines themselves are on the, really on the front lines. They have their own very robust presence of immune cells that would attempt to mitigate these problems. But it does mean the intestines become more inflamed. There's more inflammation as they're trying to fight this invasion of LPS. And then what slips through the intestines will go to the liver, putting a particular burden on the liver. But it's interesting because the liver is also the site of the solution. When it comes to LPS leaking through the guts into the blood, it's a matter of, uh, it's naturally we want to be mindful of what might make this happen more readily or what might I be eating that, uh, that is making my guts more leaky with LPS and other bacteria and pathogens. It's the two Fs, fats and fructose. 